Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voice of Anatomy. Today's topic is a tibia bone. Now the tibia bone is a medial bone of the medial side of the leg and it is homologous with the radius of a upper limb. The tibia bone is an example of a typical long bone. So it is having a upper end, soft and the lower end. First we see the side determination of the tibia. The upper end is much more larger than the lower end. The first point. Second, in the lower end, its medial side is prolonged downwards from the rest of the bone and this part is known as a medial mandibulus. So this prolonged downwards part lies medially in the lower end. And the third, anterior border of a tibia is a sar, uh, is a most prominent and the crystal line, it extending from the tibial fibrosity above up to the anterior border of a medial malleolus below. Okay. So this bone is of a right side. Now we see the feature and the attachment of a tibia. We see one by one. First we discuss the upper end. The parts of the upper end. Upper end is having, uh, it is expanded from the side to side to form the two condyle, medial condyle and the lateral condyle. Now the parts of the upper end are medial condyle, lateral condyle, intercondylar area and the tuberosity of a tibia. First we see the medial condyle. The medial condyle, it, it is larger than the lateral condyle, right? Now its superior surface, the uh, superior surface of the medial condyle is articular and the smooth. It will articulate with the medial condyle of a femur. Right. Now, its center part is uh, concave and the oval and it comes with the direct contact with the femoral condyle. While its peripheral, this peripheral part of the superior surface is a flat and it is separated from the femoral condyle by one fibrocartilaginous structure which is known as a medial meniscus. Okay. Now, the other feature in the medial condyle its posterior surface is marked by a groove, right? So this is a medial condyle. Now the lateral condyle. Lateral condyle is somewhat smaller than the medial condyle. Its superior surface is also articular, like a medial condyle. And its center part is rounded and the concave which articulate or comes in the direct contact, uh, contact with the femoral condyle. While its peripheral part is a flat, which is separated from the femoral condyle by lateral meniscus okay so this is the superior surface of a lateral condyle other feature at its posterior inferior part it will marked by a one circular facet which is known as a fibular facet and the superior medial to the fibular facet this lateral condyle is marked by one now, anterior surface of the lateral condyle is marked by the rough large impression which is also known as a goddess chipper. Right? Now, the third part of a upper end that is an intercondylar area. The intercondylar area is the area that lies between the superior surface of a medial condyle and the lateral condyle. Now, the feature of the intercondylar area, it is narrowest in the middle and the expanded anterior and the posterior. The narrowest middle part is elevated which is known as an intercondylar eminence and this intercondylar eminence on the either side it is marked by a medial and lateral intercondylar tubercles. So this is the third part of the upper end and the last part that is the tuberosity of a tibia. Tuberosity of the tibia it faces anteriorly in the upper end. It is having two parts, the smooth upper part and the rough lower part. The junction of the smooth upper part and the rough lower part marks the junction of the epiphyseal line of a upper end. Now we see the attachment and the relation of a upper end of a tibia. The first the medial condyle. <coughs> see the medial condyle its upper border, this upper border of a medial condyle provides the attachment of a capsular ligament of a knee joint 
and also the deeper fiber of a tibial collateral ligament. Its posterior groove part receives the insertion of a semi-membranous muscle. Here, semi-membranous muscle. Okay. Now move to the lateral condyle. The lateral condyle, in its rough anterior part or rough anterior impression, gives the attachment of a iliotibial tube. Iliotibial tube. Now this margin of the fibular facet provides the attachment of the capsular ligament of a superior tibiofibular joint which is a plain type of a synovial joint. And the groove superomedial to this facet lodges the tendon of a popliteus muscle. So these are the attachment of a lateral condyle. Now the attachment on the intercondylar area from the anterior to posteriorly, the first comes the anterior horn of a medial meniscus, then behind it the anterior cruciate ligament, behind it anterior horn of a lateral meniscus, then posterior horn of a lateral meniscus, the posterior horn of a medial meniscus and the most posteriorly the posterior cruciate ligament. So you can remember the arrangement of this structure by uh, remembering the first letter of a uh, medial meniscus, lateral meniscus and cruciate ligament that is M C L. Okay. So the first is medial meniscus M, cruciate ligament C, lateral meniscus L, again lateral meniscus L, medial meniscus M, cruciate ligament C. So the mnemonic MCL LMC that is Medical College Lucknow Lucknow Medical College. Okay. Now the last feature, last attachment of an anterior end that is a tibial debrosity. The smooth upper part of the tibial debrosity provides the attachment of a ligament pertaining and the lower rub part is a subcutaneous is separated from the skin by a Infra patellar subcutaneous bursa. Now we move to the shaft of a tibia. Shaft of the tibia is a prismoid in the same. It is having three border and three surface. Three border are anterior border, posterior border, and the intrusus border, or lateral border. First we see the anterior border. The anterior border is a most prominent and the crest line, and it is or S shaped curve. It extending from the tibial debrosity above up to the anterior border of a medial malleolus below. This is anterior border. So you can see in its upper part the convexity of the anterior border is facing medially and in the lower part the convexity is facing later. The second is a posterior border. Posterior border is start above from uh, this medial condyle and below it will end at a posterior border of a medial malleolus. So the posterior border is a smooth and rounded. The third is the intrusus or the lateral border. Intrusus or the lateral border start below and in front of this fibular facet. This one. And it will go downwards and ends at the anterior margin of a fibular nose below. This is the fibular nose which lies on the lateral surface of the lower end of the tibia. Anterior margin of the fibular nose below. So these are the three borders. Anterior border, posterior border, intrusus border. Now we see the surface. The surface between the anterior and the posterior border are a uh, medial border. The surface between the anterior and the intrusus or lateral border is a lateral surface and the last the surface between the intrusus and the posterior border is a posterior surface. Okay. See the medial surface is a, most of the part is a subcutaneous medial surface. The lateral surface is a concave in its upper three fourth part whereas the posterior surface is a wider in its upper part narrow in its lower one. Now the, the wider upper part, in the wider upper part you can see one uh, 
prominent ridge which is going obliquely from the fibular facet above up to the uh, this uh, uh, medial border below. This ridge is known as a solid line. Okay. So the posterior surface is divided into the small triangular area above the solial line and the large area below the solial line. Now this large area below the solial line is divided by a vertical range. Vertical range into the lateral area and the medial area. So these are the feature of a shaft of a tibia. Now see the attachment. The first the lateral surface. The lateral surface, its concave part from its upper two third gives the origin of a tibialis anterior muscle. Now the attachment of the medial surface. The medial surface, most of the part of the medial surface is a subcutaneous. Only in its upper part, it receives the insertion of a three muscle, the sartorius, gracilis and a semitendinosus from before back part. Right? Now the medial surface in its upper part also provides the attachment of a tibial collateral ligament. Now the last, the posterior surface. This prominent solial line gives the origin to the soleus muscle, which arises in the form of the arch fibre. The small posterior surface above the solial line receives the insertion of a popliteus muscle. And this uh, lower part below the solial line, its lateral part gives the origin of a tibialis posterior, whereas the medial part gives the origin to the flexor digitorum longus muscle. So these are the attachment of a sub of a tibia. Now the last part of the tibia is a lower end. The lower end is uh, smaller than the upper end. It is having the five surface. The anterior surface, posterior surface, medial surface, lateral surface and the inferior surface. The anterior surface is a large, it is rough in its upper part and the grooved in its lower part. The posterior surface is a small and the rough. The medial surface is subcutaneous and it is continuous with the medial surface of a medial malleolus. The lateral surface will present the notch which is known as a fibular notch and uh, above the fibular notch there is a rough area. This fibular notch will articulate with the lower end of the fibula to form the inferior tibiofibular joint which is a syndesmosis type of the joint. And the inferior surface which is articular, it articulates with the superior trochlear surface of a talus cord form the part of a ankle joint which is a hinge variety of sinovial joint right now the important attachment of a lower end the on the lateral surface the rough upper part above the fibular nodes will provide the attachment of an introsis tibiofibular ligament the margin of an inferior surface provides the attachment of a capsular ligament of an ankle now the relation of the tibia, its lower end anteriorly related from medial to lateral, remember tibialis anterior tendon, extensor, hallucis longus, anterior tibial artery, deep peroneal nerve, extensor digitorum longus and the peroneus tertius muscle. So these are the uh, structure related to the anterior part, lower end of a tibia from medial to lateral. You can remember this structure by one mnemonic, the hospital are never dirty place. The T for tibialis anterior, hospital for extensor, hallucis, H for hallucis longus, A for artery, anterior tibial artery, never, N for no, that is deep peroneal no, the T, D for digitorum extensor digitorum longus and place P for uh, peroneus tertius. Now the lower end of the posterior surface of the tibia is related from the medial to lateral. Tibial is posterior which is lodges in the groove behind the medial malleolus. Then the 
flexor hallux is longus, posterior tibial artery, tibial nerve, and the flexor digitorum longus. You can remember this structure by one mnemonic. The dirty place are never hospital. The for tibial is posterior, dirty for uh, flexor digitorum longus, place are posterior tibial artery, never tibial nerve, and hospital is a flexor and uses longus. Now the lower one third of a median surface of the shaft is crossed by a great saphenous vein. Okay, so this is the relation of the tibia and in general all about the tibia. Thank you. If you like this video, like it and share with your friends. And to get the regular update on the anatomy videos, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.